Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. And if you are new, thank you so much for being here. My name is Troy. And as you can tell from the title today, I wanted to discuss some topics on homemaking, um, being a stay-at-home mom, just trying to keep an orderly home and one that runs in a smooth fashion. Now, um, I know there are a million videos like this on um, YouTube where, you know, each woman does something different or says something different that helps her keep a home. So I just want to add my little bit of two cents in there. Um, by dynamic, what I mean is um, just having a, a lot of different um, balls, you know, in the air as far as um, how my household is run. Now, um, I am a, a military spouse. Um, I have uh, three children. Um, I have one child that has um, educational special needs. So um, a lot of things that I have seen in other homemaking tips on their videos, which I think can be useful, of course, especially if you're in that similar station of life. Um, a lot of slow living type of things if that's something that you're really you know going for I think that's great or a couple of things that may romanticize the um, homemaking process which um, if that's something that you need to motivate you I think that's also awesome but as I said I live a very dynamic life um, I can my home can be super traditional where my husband goes to work from nine to five and he's available for the weekends to bring home pizza and hang out with the kids to me not seeing him for a year or you know um, he comes home and one day I'm helping him you know clean his IBA which is um, just a fancy term for a bulletproof vest <laughs> but you know um, for the mamas that have a little bit more of a dynamic life um, where you're not, you know, in those early bird, you know, that, you know, a honeymoon part of marriage where you're just learning to cook from scratch or you're just learning to keep a schedule where, you know, you're at that point where you're a good six years in and you've got a toddler <laughs> and you've got a child in elementary school and you're just trying to make it all work. I feel like these might be some tips that you could apply that will be extremely useful. So you guys, let's get into it. So tip number one I have is that I wake up early and by early I don't mean seven o'clock I mean 5 a.m. 5.30 the latest. If I get up after 5.30, my, most of the time my day is completely off because of um, just the amount of things that I have to do. So I wake up really early. One, um, one benefit to me waking up early is um, I'm able to plan. I'm able to, you know, say, hey, this is a to-do list for today. These are things that I have to prioritize. These are things that may or may not get done. Um, also, in the morning, it's a great time for me to just be alone. Um, I am rarely alone. Most mamas aren't. <laughs> Even when you're going to the bathroom, someone's knocking and needing something, and you've got to do something as soon as you come out of there. But um, that alone time really helps me focus. It helps me make a plan for the day, and it gives me a little bit of me time to focus on myself so that um, I'm able to give everything that I've got um, to my family for the rest of the day. Now, um, it's, it doesn't look the same every day. Some days I am working out because uh, maintaining my body is super important to me um, one day I may just be listening to some sermons because it's just like I know it's gonna be a rough day so I'm gonna need the Lord's encouragement so I'll be listening to sermons or reading my Bible and then some days because my husband is in the military and um, he has a PT every morning. If you're military wife, you already know what that means. And if you're not, that just means uh, soldiers have to exercise every single day. Um, and they get up and they have to, uh, they get up at probably like 4 a.m. So they can just literally exercise for a couple hours before their workday starts. So also that gives me and my husband some time to, you know, just, you know, talk a little bit. I'll make him a cup of coffee and he's on his way out the door. Um, so I don't know if you have a spouse that likes to eat before they work out. Mine doesn't. So like I don't have to make breakfast that early. But um, it just gives us a little moment of time just to speak to each other maybe reflect on the day before you know just hang out a little bit sometimes me and my husband will just like catch a really um something on the news that's like you know the, something like that but just a little bit of time together but i think it's super important to wake up that early to set a plan to get the day started at the bare minimum i always cook breakfast before my kids wake up so that I'm not doing that while they're underfoot um, so I can help them whether it's finding a lost shoe my daughter um, she's uh, starting to uh, do her hair by herself so um, that's a, one thing I can check off the list but sometimes she may need help and I can help her with that but um, I do like to wake up before my family just to center myself make a plan for the day and so if when they do need me I can have at least one thing accomplished my um, second tip is to prep everything 
whatever you can prep in advance, try to do that. So um, for every family, it's different. What you do or don't need to have done the day before, you know, is different. Um, if I, I have children where I'm at the age where I can spend an extended amount of time on meal prep. So I have literally, um, in the past, I've prepped meals for a month. I have prepped meals for two weeks. Um, if, you know, if that's what the grocery that I had in the house, um, even if you are able, if you're not able to do that, if you were able to prep two meals, something simple as, um, browning taco meat before, um, the next day, or, you know, if you want to make a lasagna and put it in the oven, if it's just only one day in advance, it saves you so much time. Um, meal prep if you can and if you can't meal prep then uh prepare it you know wash your meats season your meats let them just marinate and sit in the refrigerator if you're making a baked chicken so you know when you uh, come home the next day you can just pop it in the oven crock pots are great for prepping um if you're chopping up your vegetables for you know a certain dish if you're doing potato salad if you can boil your potatoes chop up all of the um vegetables that you're gonna put your potatoes out the day before even if it's just one meal of prep do it because it saves a ton of time I also prep um, my children's uniform my, my kids have uniforms if your kid you know even if your child doesn't have a uniform pick their clothes out for the week you know um, so for my kids on Sunday on Saturday I wash their clothes to make sure on Sunday they're hanging up in their closet so on school on Monday we're good to go um, my kids let me know what is and isn't dirty so that I can make sure that's ready the night before, on Sunday the night before if we're leaving anything out um, and when I say prep I mean get the socks make sure you got the underwear the last thing you need to be running around at you know seven o'clock in the morning because someone can't find socks to go you know with their clothes so just um, anything that you can prep in advance do that if you have um, really really young children um, if they're on um, bottle fed if you can you know get the hot water prep you know not the hot water but just you know like sterilize the water have it in their bottles and prep before you know a feeding time just little small things like that they make a huge difference in time so I'm um, try to get that done even if you can only prep one day in advance it saves so much time you guys so you guys my third tip is to have a schedule and when I say schedule I don't mean anything super rigid that like there's no flexibility um, everyone's life looks a little bit different um, if your children have tutoring then you know those that's gonna be part of your schedule and you know extracurricular sports and things of that nature but just in general have a schedule of a weekly schedule of what consistently happens throughout your week um, when you do that it's easier prepared to the unknown it's easier to fit things in into the spaces you know where you have them I'm um, like for example um, what my daughter has tutoring on the weekends or gap I'm able to get a lot done because I don't have to run around town and pick her up from her school um, preparing um, dinner and getting the dishes done after that is super easy on that day. so you know when you set a schedule it's easier to fit things into it and it's easier to maneuver because you don't have like everything up in the air um, when it comes to um, setting a schedule also with cleaning so that things don't pile up when you have um, very young children things are super easy to pile up um, my children are a lot older so they participate in age-appropriate chores like windexing the windows and things like that but um, when you have a schedule it's easier to maintain the home consistently instead of just everything you know you try to take care of everything in one day like for me um, one thing that I do do consistently is I do one load of laundry a day just so it does not pile up and so I'm not overwhelmed and that is part of my schedule so that like I'm not trying to do you know like eight loads of laundry on Monday and Tuesday which is my normal laundry day so um, when I just do something little and I do it consistently and I do certain things then it doesn't pile up by the end of the week or a specific day so that my home is maintained consistently now there are times where you're gonna have to do deep cleanings I don't know if you all do that during the spring or if you do it like every 30 days um, I do my deep cleaning um, every change of the season so when it goes from winter to you know spring from spring to summer I do a deep cleaning um, so just like whatever your schedule is however your home is you know run however you do that then you know just make a schedule that works for you so things do not pile up and my fourth tip you guys for homemaking is to manage your expectations and that in turn will help you manage your mental health being a stay-at-home mom and being a homemaker in my opinion is not for the faint of heart it is not you know um 
it's not a soft life, in my opinion. Um, I have three children. I have a home. I have so many things that I prayed for. And it is my responsibility to maintain them and to maintain them to the best of my ability. And um, there is no hacks for hard work, to tell you the truth. You know, if you're going to be scrubbing the grout in your towel, you're going to have to get on your hands and knees and scrub it. There is no easy way to do that. And it's going to take hours, you know. <laughs> so manage your expectation. There are going to be days where your house is not going to be Instagram perfect because you have tutoring and you have more important things that are taking precedent, like helping your children with homework or projects. And then there are going to be days where they're a lot easier, where you worked your butt off this weekend so you can relax a little bit on Monday. But um, they're going to be ebbs and flows. But managing your expectations and having realistic expectations for your station in life is very important. If you have a newborn and you're nursing and you're only getting four hours of solid sleep a night, you know what? You're going to have chili dogs for dinner. You're not going to be able to make that meatloaf and that potato, you know, the mashed potatoes from scratch and do all those things. You're not going to be able to do that on a consistent basis with a newborn. So don't get overwhelmed and don't get discouraged. Um, for women at my station in life, I have a teenager and I have, you know, children that are in school, you know, so I have a lot more time to maintain my home because my kids are not there. But on the flip side, you know, I have to teach them to maintain it. You know, I can't just sit them in a corner and be like, hey, let mommy work. I have to work with my children over and over again to learn how to vacuum properly, to make your bed with, you know, the proper hospital corners, you know. So everyone's at a different station in life and they're going through different challenges. So please manage your expectations so you don't get discouraged and so that you don't get overwhelmed. Um, a large part of me doing that, as I spoke in earlier in the video, I work out. Um, maintaining my body as well as, um, you know, getting those good endorphins when you're moving, is it, it's, it's important to me and it helps me. Um, I'm a runner, you know, however you decide to get up and get moving and exercise and, you know, get that energy out, you know, wh whatever you do, whether you jump rope, whether you run the stairs in your home or you walk around the block or you just go outside and get some vitamin D, you know, do something that will help you, you know, manage your mental health, you know, work out, do whatever you need to do to, you know, give yourself that pickup so that you can give, you know, the proper energy to your family. So you guys, we're at the end of my video. I hope the tips and um, the information that I gave you was useful. Um, I hope you all learning a little bit about the dynamics of my life and you know how I maintain my home was helpful to you. And hopefully I feel like they can be applied, you know, over all stations of life. You know, of course you'll personalize them on your own. I hope to see y'all in my next video. Bye.